As we mentioned at the beginning, small companies are the ones still discovering Second Life as a playground to widen their horizons. But it's also the non-profits who are coming in droves. One group in particular set out to coordinate the efforts of over 60 socially active organizations from all over the globe. So, as the SL brand is still evolving, they might be at a short-term disadvantage compared to other virtual worlds built around already established brand names. But Dragster Dupre is hopeful and foresees a future of more than just shopping. What happened here? Corporate sims lie deserted in the vast ocean that is Second Life. While executives scratch their heads about how to make money in virtual worlds, the non-profit Commons One Island is populated with colorful avatars listening intently to a penguin and a pink cat. Glitteractica Cookie is the co-founder of the non-profit Commons in SL, an umbrella organization providing workshops and office space. She prefers SL to other web-based networking tools. With MySpace and Facebook, you might see other people's connections, but you don't really get a sense of who they are. Second Life becomes a more viable way to network with strangers and be able to meet with other organizations with like missions. Miss Cookie is Susan Tenby in real life. She works for San Francisco-based TechSoup. Tenby says many residents in SL are willing to do meaningful volunteer work, thereby helping to maximize scarce resources. Nonprofits are run as as businesses, except the end function is not to earn money, but to solve a social need. Running day to day, if not more so, they are concerned with allocation of resources and dollars. Earlier in the month, Tenby had a chance to sell SL to a fairly skeptical legislature. We have currently two SIMs, which are nonprofits only. SIM is an island, basically. Right. We have two nonprofit islands. Chairman of the Subcommittee on Telecommunications and the Internet, Democrat Ed Markey of Massachusetts, convened the hearing in Congress. Also present, the creator himself, Philip Rosedale. He even put on suit and tie for the occasion. Trying to learn something or build a business in Second Life, I would, I would argue, is in many cases a kind of a lemonade stand experience that is superior to a lot of other forms of learning that you might have around you. Members of Congress either dismissed engagement in virtual worlds as pure escapism. Let's say you're a computer analyst, you, you work eight, eight, nine, ten hours a day, you come home, you have it, you go into your home and you don't have much of a social life, you can get on Second Life and have a whole new social life. Or worried about the Bin Ladens of the future hiding among strangely dressed cartoon figures. I have in my hand something from the London Sunday Times online and the heading is Virtual Jihad hit Second Life website. The hearing showed that the public perception problem of SL persists. Companies are reluctant to invest money in a world seemingly immune to the tried and true marketing ploys of old. But something as simple as building community is apparently working for Glitteractica Cookies Group. And her funky looks got her a mention on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, notwithstanding a large-breasted dolphin reporter handling the coverage. I created an avatar that reflects my personality. <laughs> Dolphins are gentle and intelligent. Plus, I love me some tatas. Maybe the message to our friends in corporate should be don't be afraid of your precious brand being um, customized in the virtual realm. Hey, there was a time even Linden Lab thought their product could not be hurt by a harmless joke. Ah, the good old days. Hopefully, the nonprofits bring back some of that grassroots spirit. For Life for You News, I'm Dragster Dupre. Thanks, Drax. This has been Life for You for this week. Christoph Broom will be back again next time. That is if he is recovered from his birthday party. Hmm, that might be a tough job for our makeup artists here at Life for You. Restoring Christoph's face to its original digital demonic perfection. It's only a few mouse clicks away. That's the brilliance of Second Life. So here's wishing you all a, a great, great Second, Second Life. life. Um, I think it's not funny. It's not a funny yeah. topic. Yeah, he drinks too much. Definitely, it's not only for on his information, it's comments, really and suggestions. I, I visit our website: www.lifeforyou.tv. What, what is it now? Why do we have to fire him? If, if is it drugs? It's it's also drugs. It's alcohol. I mean, I saw him drinking in the morning. He takes pills. Those those blue ones. I don't know. Viagra? Is it Viagra? I've seen him with prostitutes. He says they're his <laughs> girlfriends, but I know they're prostitutes. Where does he get his money? How much do you pay him? Well, it's too much, definitely. That guy is a mess. Somebody's got to help him. He's crying out for help. 
It's not only uh, female prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell more, Walt. 